Of course it would be raining. Do stop grumbling, Ed. Ten to one it will clear up in an hour or so. And in the meantime, we're pretty well off. There's a wireless and lots of books. A wireless and lots of books? I thought we said last night we were exploring today. Once there were four children whose names were Peter, Susan, Edmund and Lucy. This story is about something that happened to them when they were sent away from London during the war because of the air raids. They were sent to the house of an old professor who lived in the heart of the country. He had no wife and he lived in a very large house with a housekeeper called Mrs. McCready and three servants. The children had imagined the splendid time they would have here. However, on this, their first morning, there was a steady rain falling. Well, it's going to take more than a little rain to stop me from exploring. What do you mean, Peter? I'm going to explore the house. The house? We can't do that, can we? Look, this is the sort of house where no one's going to mind what we do. Anyway, they won't hear us. It's about ten minutes' walk from here down to that dining room, and any amount of stairs and passages in between. Let's go! Come yeah, on! Yeah, yeah. Come on, in and here. And that was how the adventures began. It was the sort of house that you never seemed to come to the end of, and it was full of unexpected places. The first few doors they tried led only into spare bedrooms, but soon they came to a very long room full of pictures, and there they found a suit of armour. And after that was a room all hung with green, with a harp in one corner. And then came three steps down and five steps up, and then a kind of little upstairs hall, and a door that led out onto a balcony, and then a whole series of rooms that led into each other and were lined with books. And shortly after that, they looked into a room that was quite empty, except for one big wardrobe, the sort that has a looking glass in the door. Nothing in here. Oh, I want to look in that wardrobe. Look if you want, but we're going on. Come on, let's go down here. No, I want to go down here. Oh, make up your minds. But it's such a lovely wardrobe. I wonder if it's locked. It isn't. Oh, fur coats. I love fur coats. There was nothing Lucy liked so much as the smell and feel of fur. Mm. She immediately stepped into the wardrobe and got in among the coats Ooh. and rubbed her face against them, mm. leaving the door open, of course, because she knew that it was very foolish to shut oneself up into any wardrobe. Soon she went further in and found... Oh, there's a second row of coats. It was almost quite dark in there, and she kept her arms stretched out in front of her so as not to bump her face into the back of the wardrobe. She took a step further in, then two or three steps, always expecting to feel woodwork against the tips of her fingers, but she didn't. This must be a simply enormous wardrobe. What is that? Mothballs? It feels cold. This is very strange. Ouch! Lucy was no longer rubbing her face against soft fur, but against something hard and rough and even prickly. It feels like branches of trees. And then she saw that there was a light ahead of her, not a few inches away where the back of the wardrobe ought to have been, but a long way off. Something cold and soft was falling on her. A moment later, she found that she was standing in the middle of a wood at night time with snow under her feet and snowflakes falling through the air. What? These are trees. Am I in a wood? But it doesn't make sense. I can see the wardrobe back through the trees, even the daylight of the room. Shall I go forward? Hmm. I can always get back if anything goes wrong. I do wonder what that light is. In about ten minutes, she reached the source of the light. It's a lamppost. Hmm. I wonder why there's a lamppost in the middle of a wood. 